Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac. No, no, no. No, my friend. We are not doing this. We are due for a random run. It you never random Kane anymore. You gotta go out of your way to pick Kane. I even got the standard uh, punishment for redoing a run here and have to play on a freaking Curse of the Labyrinth and as Blue Baby, but hey. There's a tinted rock right there and the item room. Shame I have neither of the resources that would actually allow me to make good use of those, uh, that infrastructure over there. Are you serious with this shit, the Spider Bros? Come on, man. Get up here. The last few runs that we've. Oh, oh, oh. The last few runs that we've had in Isaac. Are you kidding me? Well, one bomb becomes very much worthwhile here. But anyway, the last few runs that we've had in Isaac have been fantastic. A little bit of Guppy in my life, a little bit of Rita by my side. I'm going to talk about Mambo number five as we get a little bit further along. The tangents know no bounds. What? I don't, I don't get it. Who are these women that are getting with Lou Bega, and do they really not mind? That, I mean, I don't know if this is some kind of like the game type stuff going on, but um, a little bit of Monica in my life, a little bit of Rita by my side, a little bit of Tina, what I need, a little bit of Vegeta, what I see. Um, I wonder if we could bomb our way into this secret room and get into one of these item rooms without having to waste a key. If so, that would make my life easier. Is this poop just unassailable? Okay, fair enough. Like, are they- I'm not saying that everybody needs to adhere to, you know, antiquated views of monogamy or anything like that. But still, you think- that, Oh, I picked wisely! I picked Moss effin' wisely. We'll hopefully get another key and get uh, Mom's knife in the other room. I, uh, half kid. But anyway. But, like, Lou Bega, for the one hit that he had, Mambo number five makes no damn sense to me. It was, it had, I've, I'm kind of forgetting how it starts here, but it's like, wait, this is actually going to bother me if I can't figure it out. You got to give me a second here. I can jump in like halfway through the song. You know what? I'm going to even alt tab here. Mambo, because this is important. Number five, lyrics. Lou Bega, of course. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, everybody in the car, so come on, let's ride to the liquor store around the corner. The boys say, I want some gin and juice, but I really don't want to. Continued, beer buzz like I had last week. I don't get it. Why are you going to the club or the liquor store if you don't want a beer buzz? Is it because the, the, the friends that you're friends with, they don't uh, have cars, so you got to drive them? It seems like if you don't want to do that, they should respect your wishes, and maybe you should consider... Dare I even say getting a new group of friends because it sounds like the friends that you have right now are not really friends at all, Lou Bega. What if this, what if Mambo number five is actually about Lou Bega's attempt to, you know, kick the habit of alcoholism, but he can't seem to do it? I'm not a teetotaler, by the way. I am by a little bit of the beverage myself, but I'm just saying, you know, you should be supportive of that. The boys say they want some gin and juice, but I really don't wanna. That's like, and then they still, at the end of the song, you still end up at the club with like eight ladies on your arms. It's like a, I don't know, it's a cautionary tale, I think. We always say the song is, you know, a lighthearted romp through the summer of 2000, but come on, man. I think Lou bega has got a little bit of a darker uh, past that he refuses to uh, let go as a result of his friendship skilly dragging him down crabs in the bucket, you know? Not to bring chaos into it. Anyway, this has been an extremely strange start to an Isaac episode. Dare I say, though, I'm extremely pleased to have gotten... Polyphemus right off the bat, and Small Rock. Our damage is going to be through the roof as Blue Baby. We also got to go to both item rooms. Spider Butt, not a good item, but it's better than poop. So I think we're poised to, to make some good moves here. Poised! Got to change that word. It, it sounds a little bit too much like noise. Anyway, this is a dead end. We could still throw this run very easily, by the way. Polyphemus is, of, of all the game winning items, Polyphemus is the one that stands least on its own. Polyphemus is like french fries, you know? A great side, but you wouldn't want to have a meal of just french fries. If you do, you'd at least, you know, feel a little shameful about it, I guess. I'm not trying to tell you how to feel about your life, but I'm just saying, you know, french fries plus a burger, burger and fries, fish and chips, you know? Bangers and mash. It shines as a, an auxiliary, which I kind of feel the same way about, uh, about Polyphemus. It's like the best item from a synergy perspective in the game. On its own, doesn't necessarily guarantee you a win, although much like French fries would guarantee you, uh, you know, they'd be guaranteed to fill your belly. This at least guarantees us a shot at it. Extra HP. The shot speed upgrade kind of sucks, but the extra spirit art could be valuable because it actually does put me in a position where I could take a deal with the devil uh, and not, you know, result in my own death if I wanted to. 
which is something I'm uh, interested in here. I realize that my blue baby meta is is antiquated and doesn't necessarily work out fantastically, but at the same time, I think I've got the I got the right idea here. I do think it's worth three hearts for the ability to fly. It's a super risk here, but at the same time, I think it is worth it, provided we can get more spirit hearts in the future. The curse room does not interest me enough at this point uh, to, to risk everything by going down to one hit. But I think the ability to fly is a worthwhile pickup. This can't be an HP downgrade. It's bombs are key. Uh, bombs are key doesn't really help me out too much. I would have preferred to have the key. We could have at least opened that golden chest or saved it for the next floor, but this is fine. Because if we come across a tinted rock on the next floor, we'll be able to open it, which is something we'd very much like to do. So we're strong, but we can't really take a punch. We got a glass jaw right now. Come on, blow up the TNT, blow up the TNT, blow up the TNT, thank you. That could have gone, that could have gone real badly right there. But in a way, this is the way that I prefer to play. I prefer to be up against the wall for the most part uh, because it forces you to be sharp. And even if we don't get spirit hearts on this floor, I think we'll uh, we'll end up surviving and we'll be better as a result of it. Obviously, I'd also like to be able to access our shop and item room if it's at all possible. You know, being able to get either a blue candle or a book of revelations or something like that would be super nice. I see that we have a library as well. Are we more likely to get book of revelations in the shop or the library? That's like an AP Binding of Isaac question that I honestly don't know the answer to. One day, one day that fire is going to really know where it wants to go when we'll walk in the sun. But till then, tramps like us. Baby, this is Sisyphusian. That was a bit of a stretch, I'll admit. <clears throat> Alright. Important room. Wonder if maybe if nine lives showed up, we could pick it up. Because obviously it would be, like, objectively an improvement at this point. I don't really want to become Guppy, but if we became Guppy as kind of a side effect, that's fine. Uh, Pestilence is a bit of a piss-off here, because he could fairly easily destroy us in one hit. So... I'm, I'm going to just kind of keep my distance. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pardon me. A little bit congested here. It's the cat hair, man. And the fact that, you know, I kind of sort of shout for a living. It wreaks havoc on your voice, even if you talk in a nice kind of dulcet tone like I do for the most part. End the day with a lot of, uh, you know, hot tea and throat clearing. Obviously, we didn't get uh, any HP there, which is uh, kind of as expected. I'm going to try to put a bomb here. This would be ideal if the secret room were here. Oh, that sucks real bad. Well, I'm going to still put one here. Okay, that's that's fine. We've got enough money to make our shop worthwhile and maybe buy an item and a key in it, which is big. If nothing else, this second level Meat Boy will help me attack the poop, which is important. So we are going to go to our shop. Attack the poop and the fires, I should say. Okay, blue candle. Much better. Uh, much, much better than spider butt. And it is a little bit of a protective item as well, so I feel pretty good about that. I'm fortunate that we didn't get any more keys, but I think we're going to stop looking for, like, Book of Revelations now because I already have a good space bar item. That's with the condition, or the added, you know, asterisk, if you will, that we do need some way to replenish our HP. Uh, that'll be somewhat helpful, but I can't help but feel like I deserve a little bit more given that... We just got through this entire floor without taking damage, didn't get to go to our library or our item room. But hey, down to the next floor and we're a very offensively strong run. It's just the fact that we're wafer thin right now that could actually end up causing some problems for us. But hey, we made our bed. It's time to lie in it. Hopefully it's a, a bed made out of money with uh, many, many beautiful women. It's a Simpsons reference. I'm not just, yeah, I'm not going back on my Lou Bega, you know, monogamy rants. What do I care, man? I always thought Lubega was, like, from South America. I believe he's a German-born, like, Ugandan. Which, I mean, I don't mean anything by that. It's just it's a surprise, because it was part of that whole, like, you know, Ricky Martin living La Vida Loca era. I was like, yeah. If you if you had asked me five years ago where Lubega was from, I would be like, I don't know, man. Maybe Ecuador? I would not have said Germany. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. It's just an interesting piece of information, you know? We can't really do anything with that. As far as, um, you know, special consumable items go, I much would have preferred to get Skeleton Key as opposed to the Quarter. 
But I can't really complain about getting the quarter and having all of our financial woes for the remainder of the run taken care of. That being said, I desperately, desperately desire some extra HP here. Who are we going to be fighting? Fistula is not bad. The only thing that sucks about this is uh, our relatively low rate of fire makes us somewhat vulnerable. But we can also fly and just hang out over top of these rocks, so I'm not going to sweat it too much. Like, this is... It's been a while since we've had a run that was this glass cannony. Ugh. I always like to run a little bit glass cannony, but this is getting ridiculous. Well, we can gamble and get more keys. Which is good because I want to check out our shop. Uh, I'm not really worried about our... Our impending death. If we end up on Necropolis on the next floor, I'll be a little scared. But for right now, I, I feel just fine. I've taken a deal with the Devil, so I, I'm unlikely to get deals with the Angel at any point, which means that Relic or Miter is going to have to show up in kind of a roundabout fashion. I can't really afford to, to trade HP to get into uh, Curse Rooms right now. I would lo I'd love to open all these golden chests. Uh, I wonder if I can put a bomb down here and maybe get into the shop without using a key. No. Well, we have enough bombs to definitely find the shop, or sorry, the secret room either way, and uh, at this point, something like the Ankh would be a huge pickup for us, but raw liver would be great as well. Or just more money, I mean, it's, it's acceptable, it's not necessarily the most important thing in life right now, but it's, uh, you know, you can't take it with you, but sure, I'll, I'm happy for it regardless, I suppose. This is what I was hoping for, is actually uh, a, a fortune teller. So, the fortune teller uh, on a, like a short-term proximate level. Oh, Hierophant, so good. What's the most important thing this uh, fortune teller gives us? Definitely spirit hearts. On a long-term level, what's the most important thing this uh, fortune teller gives us? Maybe trinkets. If we could get a great trinket for him. And by the way, Judgment, the, an awesome card for us. We've gotten super lucky there. Yeah, Ace of Spades is a pretty good trinket. Um, if we can get good trinkets, that could sort out a lot of problems for us. Also, some keys would be nice, but... Uh, I'm happy with this regardless thus far. We've more than doubled our HP, picked up a Judgment card that, with our substantial supply of money, probably gives us a, a better chance of getting a free deal with the Devil item, which is important because I don't have very much HP at all. Um, yeah, this is this is good. Now, I would very much like to get a payout before 15 cents. A key payout before 15 cents. Because, as of right now, we're a little bit disappointed in that regard. That's going to give me fly love, I guarantee it. Oh, okay. Well, it gave me some love from a fly. That's a little different, though. Okay. I was really hoping that would be Justice. The Stars card is actually not that good for us, but we did get two keys out of it. But I spent one more cent that I should have. Uh, that's all right. Um, we're not going to use the Judgment card on this floor. It's much more useful on the next floor if we get a deal with the Devil. Well, we should shoot the poop. Because we only need one more penny to guarantee ourselves a deal with the Devil item. Or not a deal with the Devil, a shop item. Brain gets uh, the wires crossed sometimes. Uh, I think we're likely to fight Greed as well, so I'm not going to sweat it too much yet. We didn't fight Greed, but it's Notched Axe, so we don't need to worry about the money situation that much. I'm going to save our key and uh, just head down to the next floor. This is pretty much fine. That fortune teller may have given me the items necessary to keep me alive long enough to maybe get even more carried than I already am. There are going to be people out there already who say, Oh, this is a one run. Oh, this is a one run. It's not a one run. And it's not just me saying my makeshift catchphrase. We have like no HP and no means to replenish our HP, which puts us in a problematic situation, but one we can fairly easily get out of, but we do need that item. Necropolis Curse of the Lost. This is a, a test. Every run has them. Almost every run at least has a test. Hopefully this is the last test that we face on this run. And we come out of this floor, we could be uh, nearly dead. Or we could be stronger uh, than we've ever been, proportional to the enemies. But, it really could go either way. So I've got to maintain some focus here. Uh, the blood bank is mostly meaningless, probably. Blue Baby is not a good recipe for blood banks, unfortunately. If you want a good recipe for blood banks, it's, uh, you know, a cup of flour, uh, two eggs, and then uh, whisk until adequately beaten. It doesn't really make any... I'm not a baker. I'm more of a... I'm like more of a, a dinner chef. Not, not a dessert chef, really. I'm not a chef at all, but... You know, I, when people... if it, People have a weird notion of cooking. Cooking is just gastronomical chemistry. It's, it's fairly easy to be a not-awful cook, you know? I always thought, 
in college, it was weird. People were like, yeah, I just eat like mac and cheese all the time. I'm like, really? Like, I guess if you like mac, and it's different for me because I don't really like mac and cheese. Or like, I eat instant noodles all the time. Like, you could make like a dope sandwich soup or salad for lunch in like five, well, maybe not a soup from scratch, but a salad or sandwich that's substantially better than instant noodles for in like five minutes. Obviously, I know that it's a money thing as well, but you know, I know people that are my age doing very well for themselves professionally and they still just have like hot dogs for dinner every night. I'm not saying you can't do that, you're an adult, you can do whatever the hell you want. But if you feel like you're doing it just because you're a bad cook, it's, it's easy, man. You know? Get yourself, uh, you know, some, some mixed greens. And then you get a steak. You just kind of cook it for like a few minutes on each side and it's done and it's beautiful. You don't need to mess around with it. You don't need to throw any A1 sauce on it. You just need to cook it. And then, it, I don't know what I'm even talking about anymore. We got a little Darwinian man thing going on here. So it, it, that's the secret. But I'm glad there are people who are bad, or this sounds shitty to say, but I'm glad there are people who think cooking is kind of like a mystical science. Because when you cook something very simplistic, they don't know that it's very simplistic, and then they're like, oh, that's amazing. Like, you make an omelet. Wow, this is, how'd you make this omelet? It's pretty easy. You just kind of, like, crack some eggs in the pan and don't cook them too long. Put some, like, feta cheese in there. It's del you don't need to pay $12 for a feta cheese and spinach omelet. The ingredients for it are, like, literally 15 cents. Oh, that damage is absolutely terrible. Okay, I'm getting a little bit, this is the, this is the Northern Lion problem. I'm getting a little bit tangential. We're not at the point where we can safely do tangents yet. There's a lot of riffraff available on this run that could potentially screw us up, especially on this floor. So we're just gonna be cool for now. We can go back in that cooking tangent later. 29 cents is pretty sweet. More than enough money to buy whatever we would want to get on the shop? Come on, dog. That was a, a risky cross there. I shouldn't have done that. Just one of these shots land. How did I miss all, every single one of those shots? That was absurd. This guy is unhittable, uh, except for that time. I hit him pretty nicely there. Had a lot of like the same archetypes for rooms here. That's all right. You know the patterns, it's a little easier to handle. That spider's gonna be fast. Okay, this is important. Get a deal with the devil, use this judgment, and then I'll be very excited for the, the state of things to come. Now, there's a tinted rock. Two spirit hearts out of that would be a match made in heaven. We almost killed the bloat without getting hit. What I'm most excited about is killing the bloat without him having jumped, except for that last second, which didn't really matter. We got a key and a tarot card. The tarot card's High Priestess. Just give me Spirit Arts, man. Keep it simple, stupid. So we have the Pact. Uh, oh, such bad damage. Thank God you're not Demon Judgment. Let's see what this guy gives us, because that'll determine whether or not I choose to take Brimstone here, I think. Okay. I can't really afford to take both. I, I literally could, but I shouldn't. Oh, he gave me an HP upgrade. Now I could afford to take both. We've got Polyphemus. Polyphemus plus Brimstone is real darn good. No, I can't really afford to take both. I'm gonna take Brimstone. I know that's gonna annoy some people. And you know, I'm okay with it. Because I think it's the right decision from a survival standpoint. And honestly, I kind of feel like as Blue Baby, Hey, that's awesome. Now I could have taken the pact, but I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Um, honestly, as Blue Baby, my allegiance is to the run. Uh, when I play as Isaac, I, can, I have, feel like I have a little bit more creativity, right? I can afford to say, hey, I don't really want this item that much. Because, um, like, even though it's great, I could get something else instead. Um, I don't really have that luxury when I play as Blue Baby. I pretty much just go for the win. Now, Brimstone Polyphemus' ability to fly, Blue Candle, puts us in a very, very good situation, I'll admit but we still don't have very much HP, which is why whenever we get the opportunity to take relatively cheap damage, I'm gonna take it. By the way, it is gonna take us 100 years to charge up Brimstone, but I guess the good thing about it is that, uh... Ah, that's terrible. The good thing about it is that, uh... I have Blue Candle to back me up after I pop that first Brimstone shot. So we'll open up this golden chest because we have a few spare keys. This isn't a one run. It's still not. It's better than it used to be, but we still have not solved our major problem, which is a lack of HP. But, you know, you can, it's one of those weird situations where you can kind of solve it just by throwing more damage at it. So the Fool card is kind of okay. 
We got keys out of that at least. That sucks so bad. But um, yeah, the fool card is kind of okay for obvious reasons. Allows us to teleport out of that mom fight and maybe get another deal with the devil. The only thing, unless we got a ton of spirit hearts on the next floor, the only deal with the devil I could see myself being excited for is either a three hard mom's knife deal to upgrade our brimstone to mom's knife or kill Krampus, get lump of coal plus two damage. Apart from those, I think we are at the, the rare point in uh, in my Isaac quote-unquote meta where I'm like, damn dude, I don't really want to give up any more HP just to get extra damage. So the ladder is truly terrible here, that's going to be the last shop, and uh, unfortunately, shops on this run, not quite as useful as shops on the last run. Would have been nice to pick up uh, the Pacts, if we'd had a little bit more HP, I would have done it, because... Uh, the charge time for the second brimstone shot is out of control. Now, largely that's going to be irrelevant, as you can see. On single target rooms, or rooms where enemies are bunched up together, this is going to lay a path of uh, destruction and waste, the likes of which we have not seen since Temptation Island. What a strange uh, reference that is uh, supposedly apropos of nothing, or seemingly apropos of nothing. But anyway, if I have to fire two shots at an enemy, that's where things get funky. So we are, we're just weirdly balanced here. Much like... A dizzy gymnast. We are weirdly balanced. Those extra keys, quite nice. Blue candle is is almost a dream item for me to have on a run like this, where I've kind of uh, messed with the standard meta a little bit, because it it does allow me to kind of fill that time in between charges with a little bit of crowd control. Now we can't shoot blue candle and charge brimstone at the same time, so it's not like it's it's just saving us anything in that regard, but. It's nice to knock out some enemies and then get the Brimstone Charge back for the next set. During the, the cooldown time for Blue Candle, so I guess the, I'm not totally accurate there. Alright, three hearts. Beat as one. We probably don't want to take that in with us, but we can at least see what it is. Chariot. It's good if we find an arcade. I don't think we'll one-shot Mom, but it might actually be close. We're in a two-shotter. And we could use Blue Candle to accomplish this, but we're only like a few seconds away, so why not just do things this way. We'll definitely take the Polaroid with us, because that invincibility is going to be huge. Still very much not a one run. What was the other card? Chariot. So if we do find an arcade, we'll use it. And we stand a pretty good chance to find an arcade, to be honest with you, considering we came down here with like 26 cents. This is a full Blue Candle room. We don't need to use Brimstone at all, unless we want to. And I kind of want to, because it's going to save me a little bit of... Oh, no, it doesn't save me very much danger at all. All right, tell you what. Let's try it like that. That key is not really worth the risk, I feel. Thank you. I'm slow. That's like one of the things on this run that's a little bit problematic. Thank you, uh, cube of meat. Yeah, like that's one of the few things that's holding me back right now is my speed. It's giving me a little bit of pause. Not an enormous fan of that item. We got a second chariot card, which saves me a lot of backtracking if we find an arcade. Alright. Be cool, and I really thought that we would get the explosion there. There we go. Good enough chain reaction. Really? That's disappointing. We still have enough spirit hearts to take a deal with the devil if we want to, but... Uh, we really don't want to unless it's something... Unbelievably good. Please be like an onk or something. Well, it's money. Money is not an onk, but it can be exchanged for goods and services. So no map, no compass. Probably no problem. That was a brave decision. I'm proud of myself, but at the same time, a little bit scared that my uh, animal brain did that without the uh, consent of my, you know, higher thinking brain. That's okay, though. It was right in this situation. Take the chariot down to the next floor, and no deal with the devil, which is not that surprising, because we got one on the last floor for all of our best efforts. Still, you know, you can't get away from math. Please be balls of steel. Uh, okay. As far as telepills go... That was so bad. <laughs> but as far as telepills go, that's that's gotta be one of the best ones. I immediately, like, sacrifice that heart that we just got by being an idiot with my dodges, which is incredibly stupid considering I had the ability to fly, but, um... Hey, at least we still have that spirit art to back us up for now. It takes forever for these brimstone shots to charge. That was so stupid, I could have so easily taken damage there. I got lucky and did not. 
Um, but I was trying to knock that bomb into some other rocks to see if they might be secret tinted rocks. I think this is going to be a run where we're never going to be comfortable. That rare, um, you know, super powerful run where you just never know if you're actually going to make it until the very end. It does happen from time to time. We might not even make it on this run. That's also a conceivable possibility here. This is a blue candle room, but we've got to be very... You know what? It's not a blue candle room. Because these ding-dongs explode when you use blue candle on them. I could have easily found myself losing some HP there and feeling like a big idiot. Well, key for a bomb, not a great trade. Balls of steel. Okay, nothing for two spirit hearts. A much better trade than that golden chest. Golden chest, you should take note, man. That worked. When you aim the blue candle shot, the enemy does still hit you. Or shoot at you, the doppelganger specifically. Gotta be wary about that. One blue candle shot should finish this off, and I'm not worried at all about the boss fights that we should encounter. Skeleton key? Not skeleton key. If that was skeleton key, I would have been pretty excited. I bet. Let's just play it cool here, because I bet if I line them up, I can hit. Ah. Uh, I could have totally one shot both of them. Oh well. We're not in a place to be worrying about bragging rights yet. Although, Super Bandage really helps us out a lot with our HP situation. And then we get the two worst items that pretty much you could possibly imagine there. So it'll be down to the next floor. And, uh... Suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, we have picked up, like, a staggering amount of HP. Super Bandage helped. We picked up some HP just randomly from Judgment, the Eternal Heart. But still, man, that is, uh... A, a welcome surprise, let's put it that way. I'm pretty happy about that. This might be enough HP to carry us for the rest of the game. I'm not totally sure, though. Could play that Demon Judgment. It's uh, exceptionally frightening, though. I don't want to be like a child star, right? That is, oh, thank you, Balls of Steel. I don't want to be like a child star that's like, this is enough money to last me for the rest of my life, and then you turn 21, and you're like, oh, I was very wrong. Since this is a boss trap room, uh, we only have to fight two enemies, making it strangely better than if it were a mob trap room. Plus, we got a tiers upgrade, which I actually think is among the most important updates or uh, upgrades that we could have had because it makes our brimstone ch charge, our second brimstone charge, take a lot less time to actually fire. Which is actually a really big deal because if you've been noticing, our second brimstone charge takes approximately uh, 65 million years to charge, which means that the last time we actually saw one was uh, the, the day of the death of the dinosaurs. It's been a while. I wasn't alive back then, but your, your mother might have been. Sounds like I'm implying that your mother is deceased, and if that has touched a nerve, then I apologize. I distinctly did not intend to. Sometimes the your mother jokes, you know, they come from a place of goodwill and, uh, and silliness, and they end up uh, ending up in a place of uh, disaster like that. That's my mistake, and I... Even though I've got my sarcastic voice on, I'm sincerely apologizing. I'm probably backing myself into an even deeper pit by just keeps talking. So here we go, up to the cathedral, shall we? On the cathedral. I imagine, like, this is almost the most ideal layout or loadout you could possibly have for the Isaac fight. We're probably going to, like, eight-shot him, which is going to be relatively long as far as, like, you know, Isaac fights go, when you're this powerful at least, but he's barely gonna shoot at us. And we have an orbital, I mean that might block one shot over the course of the fight. Uh, but we can tear through these rooms leading up to him super easily. Even a single blue candle shot, which fires much, much more quickly. Oh, come on. Is, uh, is able to kill most enemies. And we have more than enough keys to handle the chest, so I think this run's actually gonna be done, I don't wanna say in record time, but I think it's gonna be a quick one. Which is a good thing. We are doing this. If I only had map plus compass. I mean, for all the complaining I could do, am I really going to on a run like this? You know, who wants to hear a multi-millionaire complain, right? Not that I'm a multi-millionaire, but in, this, in the context of this Isaac run, I'm the 1%. We have Brimstone, Polyphemus, Ability to Fly, Decent Amount of HP, Permanent Polaroid Invincibility, Blue Candle, etc, etc. You know, no one wants to hear, like, Warren Buffett complain. Who's he gonna complain to? Bill Gates, right? I, they, they seem like guys who don't complain that much. They're very philanthropic. Philanthropical? 
Donkey Kong philanthropical freeze. I really feel like I should play that. I'm a huge fan of Donkey Kong Country, but I didn't play Donkey Kong Country Returns because I was in Korea and did not have a Wii at the time. And I didn't play Tropical Freeze because I didn't play Donkey Kong Country Returns. I feel like I'm missing out. It's, you know, it's not like a freaking... Like a book... It's not like the Wheel of Time. I don't think you need to play Donkey Kong Country Returns to understand the story of Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Why didn't I play Donkey Kong Con Returns Tropical Freeze or whatever the combination of words is? Why aren't people talking about Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze all the time? I heard it was good. Chariot card's good too, but High Priestess is better. Not that they're like one using one precludes the other, but we'll take High Priestess with us. To use against Isaac, at least. Usually get like 10% of the way through the fight like that. Oh, a tarot card, maybe. Nope, Bob's riding head. We don't have any rerolls, so the chest is gonna happen pretty darn quickly, if I had to guess. Use the High Priestess card quickly. We have no rage, so it's gonna be done relatively quick. I think my eight shot estimate might not have been that bad. With High Priestess, we're at like three shots now. Maybe it's a little bit more like a six shot fight, but still. It's a quick one while he's away. Oh, it was like a five shotter. I'm not even gonna get the Chariot card because I'd rather just use Brimstone than uh, do damage with like that invincibility, even if it is free damage. Eh, eh. Ah, the speed upgrade is actually fairly nice. We are slow and we've been slow for a while. This is a very quick run though. Well, he's away. Yeah, we know Northern Lion. Okay, you know I like uh, I like referencing the Who. They're a good ba the Who. They're a good band, man. And a quick one while he's away. It's a great song. It's that from that uh, montage in Rushmore, where Bill Murray finally sinks to the level of that 16-year-old child played by J Jason Schwartzman, and they start like pranking each other. It's a great song. It's a great song, independent of that context as well. But it's a, it's a maybe a greater song with that context in mind. Oh, that was a total waste. At least we finished it. Health up. Pretty fly. Hey, that's really useful, actually. And we're gonna fight our boss, so this fight is pretty much 100% over. I don't see us taking enough hits. Like, we have to hit Isaac about the same number of times as he hits us. Those ratios normally work out in my favor. We're not gonna even take Mom's pad because uh, the candle's a lot better, I think, in this case. We're just gonna do our standard combo. Brimstone shot, blue candle. The timing works out very nicely on those. Brimstone shot, blue candle. This might be the last one here. A little brimstone shot, thinking a blue candle right afterwards, and a mousse bouche, if you will, an accoutrement, an appetizer, an antipasto. Well, wow, that was really easy. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the run. If you did, click the like button. We got a little miniature streak going here. Again, subscribe if you wanna see more uh, Isaac on a daily basis. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.